our lesson today is to be able to classify polynomials, and we want to also be able to add and subtract polynomials. When we're finding the degree of a monomial, a monomial is a number, a variable, or the product of a number and one or more variables with whole number exponents. All right, let me just get my highlighter here. The degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of the variables in the monomial. The degree of a non-zero constant term is zero. The constant zero does not have a degree. So if we take a look at this table at different monomials, we see that the constant has a degree of zero. This monomial, which is the product of three times the number x, x is to the first power, the variable is to the first power, so the degree is 1. 1 half a times b squared, well, the a, the variable a, is to the power of 1. The variable a is to the power of 1. The variable b is to the power of 2. We add those exponents, 1 plus 2 gives us a degree of 3. Negative 1 and 8 tenths times n to the fifth power. We just have one variable there, and that variable is to the fifth power. Uh, so the degree is 5. So when we take a look at these examples here, we want to find the degree of each monomial. So this would be a degree of 2, because we only have one variable here. Undo that. We only have one variable there, and that variable is to the second power. In example B, we have two variables. We have x, which is to the power of 1. We have y, which is to the power of 3. So when we add 1 and 3, that gives us a degree of 4 for that monomial. Example C, we have 8 times x to the third power times y to the third. We have two variables, x and y x is to the power of 3, y is to the power of 3, so we add those exponents, 3 and 3, gives us a degree of 6. So when I look at example D, that's a constant. Constants have a degree of 0. If you want to try these examples down here, you can on your own. All right. I'll go over them very quickly. We have one variable in example 1, negative 3 times x to the fourth power. So, one variable to the power of 4 means we have a degree of 4. Example 2, we have 7 times c to the third times d squared. We have two variables, c and d. c is to the power of 3. d is to the power of 2. We add those powers. 3 and 2 gives us a degree of 5. 5 thirds times y. We just have one variable, and that's to the power of 1. So that will be a degree of 1. And once again, example 4, we have a constant. And a constant has a degree of 0. Now, a polynomial is a monomial or a sum of monomials. Each monomial is called a term of the polynomial. A polynomial with two terms is called a binomial. A polynomial with three terms is called a trinomial. Here we look at this example of a binomial. We have two terms, 5 times the number x and a constant of 2. So we have a two-term polynomial that is called a binomial. When we look at the three-term polynomial, we have x squared, we have 5x, and we have 2. Remember, a polynomial is the sum of monomials. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 2, three terms, trinomial. The degree of a polynomial is the greatest degree of its terms. A polynomial in one variable is in standard form when the exponents of the terms decrease from left to right. When you write a polynomial in standard form, the coefficient of the first term is the leading coefficient. So when we look at this example here, we have 2 times x to the third power plus x squared minus 5x plus 12. So we have a four-term polynomial here. 
The leading coefficient is the 2. The degree is 3. The constant term here is 12. So if I do the same thing down here, I want to write the polynomial in standard form. So we have to start with the uh, largest exponent, and we go from largest exponent to smaller exponent with our terms. So negative x to the third power is the largest exponent. We have plus the 15x, and then we have plus 3. All right. Uh, the degree here, the largest exponent is 3. So the degree would be 3. The leading coefficient here, well, the coefficient of that lead term is negative 1. So the leading coefficient here is negative 1. All right, and we know that three, this 3 here is a constant. The computer is going nuts here a little bit. Right, this is a constant. All right. We have some examples down here that you guys can try on your own. You can write these polynomials in standard form. Identify the degree and the leading coefficients of the polynomial. Then classify the polynomial by the number of terms. Right? And I probably should have done that up here. Right? Because here we have a three-term polynomial, which would be a trinomial. So in example 5, if we want to write this in standard form, negative 9z plus 4. Be careful to pay attention to the signs here. That minus sign, when I look at the 9z as a term, that minus sign means as an individual term, I would write that as negative 9z plus the 4. All right? The degree here is going to be 1. Okay? The degree is 1, because the largest power of any exponent is 1. The leading coefficient is negative 9. Right? The lead coefficient, lead coefficient, that's going to be negative 9. And what else? This would be a two-term polynomial, so this would be a binomial. When I look at example 6, we want to write this in standard form. So I see the greatest power of any variable is 3, so that has to come first. Negative t to the third power. My next highest exponent would be the second power, so that's plus t squared, and then minus the 10t. The degree here is going to be the 3, that is the largest power of any exponent. So the degree... Uh, is 1, first degree, I'm sorry, 3, thanks, erase that, let's try that again, erase that, okay. degree is going to be 3, uh, the lead coefficient here is negative 1, lead coefficient would be negative 1, and because we have three terms here, this is a trinomial. And then we look at this last example here. We want to write it in standard form. So the x cubed has to come first plus the 2.8x. Uh, the degree is going to be 3 because that is the largest power of any exponent. So the degree is 3. The lead coefficient is 1. The lead coefficient. is 1, and we have a two-term polynomial, so that would be a binomial. Alrighty, All right, you could take a look at uh, this page here, right, it's a little bit more of the same thing, right, if we needed extra practice, which, you know, I don't think we do, but you, know, you could take a look at what we have here, right, so we have the polynomials, right, if we want to write each of these in standard form, so here are the examples in standard form. We have the degrees, and we have the type of polynomial. All right? So you guys can practice that on your own if you wish. Okay? If you want to write each of these in standard form, identify the degree and classify each. 
Okay, if I take a look at this first one here, I have to write it as 7a squared plus 3. Okay, that's how we'd have to write it. If we are identifying the degree, the degree would be 2. And because there are two terms, that would be a binomial. This next one in standard form, the 2b to the fourth power would have to be first. Then we have the square term would have to be second. And the 6b would have to be last. If we're identifying uh, the degree here, the degree would be 4. And we are classifying the polynomial here. We have a three-term polynomial, which we would call a trinomial. And this last example here, we have only one term. So that is a fifth degree because the exponent is a 5. And that would be a monomial because it's just one term. Okay, so now we want to be able to add and subtract polynomials. All right. A set of numbers is closed under an operation when the operation performed on any two numbers in the set results in a number that is also in the set. For example, a set of integers is closed under addition, subtraction, and multiplication. This means that if a and b are two integers, then a plus b, a minus b, and a times b are also integers. The set of polynomials is closed under addition and subtraction. So the sum or difference of any two polynomials is also a polynomial. So let's take a look at some addition examples, right? And these are very simple. When we add polynomials, we have to first identify our like terms. So I see here I have an x, variable x, to the power of 3. And I see here I have also a variable x to the power of 3. So there are like terms. When we add like terms, we have to add the coefficients. This first term has a coefficient of 2. The second term has a coefficient of 1. So 2x to the third power plus 1x to the third power is going to be 3x's to the power of 3. All right, let's look at our square terms. When we do that, we have to pay attention to the coefficients. So here are my square terms. Negative 5x squared plus 2x squared. When we add like terms, we add the coefficients. So I have negative 5 plus 2. Negative 5 plus 2, that's going to be negative 3x squared. And then we look at our uh, any other terms that are alike. I have an x term here, but I don't have any x terms here. So I just add the x term to my sum. I have no other constant to add with the negative 1, so I add the negative 1 to my sum. And there's the sum of the uh, two polynomials. We have a trinomial plus a trinomial, and we actually wind up with a four-term polynomial. Let's look at the next example. All right. Like terms, 3x squared and 1x squared. That's 4x squared. Let's see, any x's? I have positive 1x, positive 4x. That's positive 5x. Then we have, we have negative 6 plus 10. Negative 6 plus 10 is positive 4. So there's the sum. All right, we're just adding our like terms, putting our like terms together. You guys can try these two examples down here if you'd like. All right, but I will go ahead and do them. All right, we start with our x terms. I have 3x squared and 5x squared. 3 and 5 give us 8x squared. I have positive 4x plus 2x, 4 and 2 gives us 6x's. I look at our constants. I have positive 3, positive 1 gives me positive 4. Okay? And that's our sum. Just adding the like terms. We have negative 5a squared plus a plus 2. And we want to add 2a squared, negative 1a minus 9. 
And once again, it starts with the like terms. So I have negative 5a squared plus 2a squared. Negative 5 plus 2. It's negative 3 a squared. I have positive 1a and negative 1a. They're opposites. Right? So that's going to be 0. So I don't have to write plus 0. But if I look at my constants, plus 2, negative 9, it's going to be negative 7. Right? And there's my sum. So with addition, all we have to do is find the like terms, add the like terms together by adding the coefficients, and we get our sum. So let's take a look at what subtraction looks like. When we subtract polynomials, the first thing we want to do is to use the additive inverse. Just like we do when we add integers or subtract integers, when we subtract integers, we use the additive inverse. How does that change? How does that work? We change the subtraction to addition, and then we change the sign of the term that follows that subtraction. But notice that we have a parenthesis, and we have three terms in this parenthesis. So when we use the additive inverse with subtraction and polynomials, we have to change the sign of each of these three terms to their opposites. So this negative 2 has to become positive 2. This positive 2 becomes its opposite, negative 2, and that minus 4 becomes plus 4. All right, now, I know that that's minus a positive 4. I get it. But we're looking at this as individual terms. And when I look at that minus 4 as an individual term, I treat it as if that's a negative 4. And now, once we use the additive inverse, we simply use the same rules that we did when we added on the previous uh, page. So I find my like terms. 4n squared and 2n squared gives us 6n squared. Uh, I don't have, well, I do have a positive 5 and a positive 4. That's going to be 9. But I have the negative 2n because we want to write this in standard form. So I don't have any other term to combine with the negative 2n. So I'm going to write that. But then we do have the positive 5 and the positive 4. That's going to be plus 9, right? And there's our difference. Look at another example. Once again, we start with the additive inverse. So we change the subtraction sign to an addition sign, and each of these three terms have to become their opposites. So this positive 6 becomes its opposite. The positive 4 becomes its opposite. That negative 2, right, I'm treating that as if it's a negative 2, that becomes its opposite. And now we use our rules for addition. 3y squared plus negative 6y squared. 3y squared, negative 6y squared, and it's negative 3y squared. Uh, I have the positive 8 and a positive 2. We know that that's going to be 10, but I want to write this in standard form, so I have to take care of my uh, negative 4y, put that here, and then I can add my positive 8 and positive 2, and that's going to give me a positive 10. All right? All right. We have four examples down here, two are addition, two are subtraction. You guys can try them on your own, all right? but I will do them. All right, so if you want to try them on your own, you can stop the video if you wanted to. Right, so let's do problem 10 here. 1b plus 4b. That's 5b. We have negative 10 plus negative 3. That's negative 13. When the signs are the same, we add, we keep the same sign. So problem 10, we get 5b minus 13. Problem 11. We're adding. So I have 1x squared plus 7x squared. That's 8x squared. I have negative 1x. I have negative 1x. That's negative 2x's. And then I have no other term to combine with the negative 2. So I just add that at the end. 
the negative two. And there's my sum. Alright? Now problem 12, notice that we have a subtraction sign here. So we have to use the additive inverse. So we change the subtraction sign to addition sign, and each of the three terms in the parentheses have to become their opposites. So the negative 4 becomes positive 4, negative 1p becomes positive 1p, positive 3 becomes its opposite, negative 3. So now we just use the rules for addition. I have 1p squared plus 4p squared, that's 5p squared. We have 1p plus 1p, that's 2p. Or not to p, who knows? Just a little joke. And then we have what? We have uh, positive 3 plus negative 3. That's going to be 0, right? Because they're opposites. They're going to cancel each other out. So we have 5p squared plus 2p. Then our last example, number 13. Oh, Got to get my pen here. Number 13. We have, let's see. We have to use the additive in inverse. So the subtraction sign becomes an addition sign, and each of these terms become their opposites. So the positive one-third k squared becomes its opposite, negative one-third, and then the negative six becomes its opposite, which is positive six. All right? Now, if I'm writing this in standard form, there's no other square term to put with the negative one-third k squared. So we're going to start with that. Negative one-third k squared. And there also, there is also no other term uh, that has a k, right? So we just put that negative 3 fourths k as part of our answer. The only things we really have to add here are the positive 5 and the positive 6. It's going to be 11, right? And there's our sum, all right? And that's really it for the lesson today, right? You guys are going to practice that, and just remember, when you're adding polynomials, we just add the like terms. When we're subtracting polynomials, we have to first use the additive inverse, and then we uh, use the rules for addition. All right. I hope that's been helpful. Take care.